Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Roden 132 Albatross D3 build with me and the budget modeler. How are you Hello. today, Steph? I am fine, thank you very much. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. <laughs> I've just got a notification through to say that we've gone live. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Shall we have a look at some of the comments? Because we've already got some in. We've already just started. So we've got Tiffin saying good morning. Uh, good morning Tiffin. Tiff. <laughs> we've got Jim saying good morning, morning, gents. Good Friday good morning. morning, gents. Morning, Jim. Morning, Jim. We've got Skelly saying morning, God's special people. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am one of those. <laughs> and Jim says, coffee ready and waiting. Likewise. <laughs> cup of tea and I have my traditional Mr Grumpy Cup <laughs> so what have you been up to this week Steph? Um, this week I have mainly been recovering from Salute 51 <laughs> did it go well? Uh, oh, it was amazing, absolutely amazing met some very interesting people um, if you know of him, a uh, guy on YouTube called Bill Makes Stuff, mm -hmm. have a look at his most recent video. And about 19 and a half minutes, you'll see the Models for Heroes logo, uh, the badges, the uh, stickers that we gave him that he's putting on all his stuff. So mm -hmm. that's out there, which is great. So, Excellent. yeah, um, just absolutely cream cracker from it. It's yeah. a very, very busy day, very busy. Ah, good. Apart from that, um, not a lot. I have haven't done anything more to the Agora. That's still sat down there. Uh, You've got some good news. Hopefully, I'll get that done tonight. Um, you were just asking about what I've I've been doing. I haven't got to that bit yet. Calm your burners. Calm your burners. I'll get <laughs> there in a the um so yeah hopefully tonight i'll get some more done on the agora so watch out for that and yes as mikey has so succinctly put it i have some good news after being sat at heathrow for 15 days they've finally arrived they look bloody awesome absolutely fantastic only bitch i've got is Good Lord, Quintus, sort out your customer service. It was horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. Uh, probably one of the worst customer service experiences I've ever had. Uh, at one stage, they kept ghosting me. Huh. And I'm like, please. Uh, they changed some stuff on the, the PayPal shipment details. And I said, what have you changed? Oh, we've changed nothing. Yes, you have, because PayPal have contacted me and said, You've changed something. What have you changed and why have you changed it? Oh, we haven't changed anything. So then why would PayPal contact me? Nothing. Why would PayPal contact me? Nothing. When they arrived yesterday, I sent them a really, really nice email saying, thank you very much. These look awesome. I can't wait to try them. Uh, here you go. Here's a link to where we're doing it. Please drop in, say hello, see what how it's going. <clears throat> Nothing. <laughs> Not a word. It's like I was saying to you beforehand. Um, what would be a great idea is if they could get somebody in the UK to distribute their stuff. So they send four sets of each of everything they've got across. Mm. That way, that only sits in uh, Heathrow for that amount of time. Yeah. Then... When they get to this country, they ping them an email, say, right, dum, 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 this is it. The person who does it goes on, creates a jobby jobby, sticks it on the front, puts it in the post. Yeah. It's to the person in two days. Marvellous. Great idea. Yeah. And no, I am not volunteering. <laughs> they couldn't afford me. <laughs> But, yeah, so that's my chunter over. I am really looking forward to trying these. So I've got my warm water over there. 
Excellent. Uh, it's a oil heater. So yeah, a wax heater. You know the ceramic pot on a heater that yeah. you use for smelly stuff. That is what I use for my decals because it keeps mm -hmm. the water warm. And I've, I've tested it. If you do it in cold water, it takes between 15 and 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. In warm water, it takes about five seconds. Yeah. Five to ten at worst. So warm water for your decals. Use it. Yes. <laughs> so Pop right. That's, yeah. That's my chunter over. <laughs> so, Mikey, what about you? Me, I have I have not been too bad. I am just gonna share the screen so I can show you what I've been up to. Cool. So uh, if I can get through to uh, can you see it? Can you see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. All right. Yep. So, what I've been doing, that's the base for the V2 rocket. That I've been working on. So, in the middle, I've done, it's actually a wooden disc with some black foam on top of it. Yeah. So, around the middle, I've done um, like concrete, concrete effect. And then around the outside, I've done wood. And then you got the four post holes in the corners. Mm -hmm. And then that's the lighting I've done for it this week. Oh, nice. That looks really good. Hmm. So I've got another two sets of lights to make for the back. Then I've got to do, put the resistors and stuff in underneath to make the circuits. Because all I've done is just clipped the wires onto uh, a battery pack to test it. Yeah. Yeah, and um, we're doing that in the live with Gary and John yesterday, making a whip it. Cool. How's that going? That's going really well. Yeah, we're enjoying it. We're having a laugh. We're sort of keeping to similar sort of stages as well, which is always good. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what I've been up to this week. Nice. So, hmm. what about your albatross? My albatross, yes. I shall switch cameras by the magic of television. Yeah. There we go. So, the fuselage has actually gone together brilliantly, even without tab putting any tabs in. Just needs smoothing down, that's it. Cool. It's all lined up perfect. And it looks, I think it looks pretty damn good. Myself. I focus. I used to be a good shop focus. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So what I'm going to be doing this week is I'm going to be cleaning up the seams and things and sorting out the back ends with the elevators and things. Nice. So that's my plan for this week. Yeah. So, as he's working on his arse end, yes, <laughs> I am uh, busy. Sort of, I'm going to work through this bit by bit. The first one is that, so I've got to take off what was on here because Let's it's put you on the big screen. There we go. Yep. Cool, because it's too wide and that's a lot slimmer. So, and then mark out where it goes. So I'm just. Taking this down, this will need repriming and respraying. So I'll just mark it off, just mask it off. So I'm trying to keep it in as tight as possible. Mm -hmm. And once I've done this little lot, then it's uh... so let's put these 3D decals on, and see what all this malarkey is about. Yeah. It'll look just like the real thing. But in smaller scale. Yes.
Tell you what, I do love my rotary tool with the little sponges on the end. <laughs> one of the best buys I've ever done. Because you've got so much control over it. Yeah. And it's so much quicker. Especially when you've got to take a, a chunk off. Yeah. Ooh, we've got some more comments. Yep, cool. Tiff says, Bill makes stuff is awesome. Yep, got to meet him at the weekend. Really nice bloke. Jim says, love the coffee mug, Mike. Wow, thank you very much. He also says, albatross. And he says, eagerly awaiting my parcel delivery today. Too much sought after Dragon 35th scale model armor kits. Nice. Nice. I do like the Dragon kits. There's plenty to be getting your teeth into. Oh, yes. Completely and utterly over-engineered. Yeah. <laughs> but hey. I've got the Dragon M3 half track and it's got about 20 spruce. <laughs> And the thing is, I'm not even going to be making it into the American half truck. <laughs> I'm going to be making it into a, a Remy Fitter truck. Oh, nice. Because after the uh, Second World War, the Americans gave about 100 of them, something like that, to the British Army. So the oh, Army right. used them as for Fitter trucks and things. Well, nice idea. Yeah. And then the Remy decided, because the idea was they could put a tank engine in the back of them and transport it and obviously swap the engine out. On a tank, yeah, but the Remy vehicle mechanics, as we you know, because we're a very ever resourceful lot, uh, we decided that we why should the uh, tank engine get all the comfort, uh, whilst everyone else struggles because it comes with a trailer? Why not put the engine in the trailer and build the back into a caravan? <laughs> oh, hell yes! So they uh put bump beds in there and stoves and everything. Then had a big crane on the front. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Jim says, "Can't help but think of Monty Python's Biggles dictates a letter sketch when I whenever I see World War One biplanes." Uh, don't think I've seen that one. It, it is quite funny. Mine is uh, flashard. <laughs> He it says it's currently four degrees C, and we'll top out at thirteen degrees with sunny skies in Chicago. Chicago, Illinois. From what I remember about my US geography, anyway. Illinois. Hmm. He just said, "Look at her." Yep. Ah, slack bladder. Yes. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> ah, General Melchett. Mm. I need snips. Sun and stick. Ah. Gary, he says, good morning, everyone. Good morning, morning Gary. Jim says, so you decided to join the 20 minutes to taste black, black, yeah, slack ladder. God, my words are getting awful lately. Yep, they are. 
It's called old age. Get used to it. I'm 36. <laughs> You're old. Get used to and it. Only just. <laughs> I don't think that brain fog's cleared up properly yet. Oh, it never does. Yeah. Oh my, I haven't even had a drink. Hmm. I had a beer, I think, at the beginning of the week. It's not bad. He is a bloody good actor, Rick Mayo, wasn't he? He was. Gone far too soon. Mm -hmm. Have you seen uh, Three Body Problem yet on Netflix? I've seen it advertised. Watch it. It's brill. Good. Yep. It's also got Aid Edmonds in it. Has it? Yep. In a very serious role. <laughs> Makes a joke. <judge>. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually got quite a posh voice, hasn't he? He has, yes. It surprised me the first time I watched one of his documentaries. <laughs> I say that, look at Alan Murray. That's because people only see him as the uh, the jobby jobber. Yeah. There's Adrian, uh, Vivian and Eddie. Oh, you're thinking the bottom. Yeah, well, he, he played Vivian as well, didn't he? In the young ones. Oh, yeah. Adrian Edmondson. Yes, yes, that's my era. I remember watching it as a kid with my dad. They used to love it. My mum would never let me watch it, but my dad did. <laughs> well, I've had this nearly two years. Yeah? Yeah. And I've just recharged it for the second time. <laughs> Jim says age is the great equalizer, Mike. Yeah, you're not wrong. Problem is, all I've got is my brain. <laughs> Sometimes he hasn't even got that. Oh, sorry, did that come out? Yeah. Sorry. Well, this is the thing. This is what's scaring me because I'm starting to stumble over my words more and things like that. Like I said, all I've got is my brain going for me. Yeah. And that's starting to fail me now, so right. No, <laughs> but accept it. Uh, yeah. if you start saying I'm oh, no, fighting it, you will also end up fighting those around you who care about you. Yeah. And you will slowly but surely push them away. Yeah. Don't fight it, accept it. Just say to people, look, my brain is fucked. Yeah. And people who care about you and who are around you will get that. Yeah. Those that don't aren't worth pissing knowing, to be honest well, with you. Well, this thing, because I've got this, because that stupid fibromyalgia, I have days where I can't even, it just, I know Talk. I feel like I'm completely detached and drunk. Yeah. And it's so frustrating. And I quite often beat myself up over it because I want to be do stuff like my model making or reading my books and things. Mm. And my brain just won't do it. But you can't. Like, the, the way I explained it to my doctor was like it's trying it's like trying to get my car into first gear without pressing the clutch. You're yep. just trying to force it in, it's grinding constantly. Yep. Uh, Jim says, didn't know Rick Mayo passed. Yeah, he died a few years ago. He had a heart attack whilst out running. Allegedly. Yes. Whilst he was in his 50s. Yeah. Sorry. It but... was before the great jabby jabby, though. It was. But they reckon yeah. he was about to blow the whistle on things at BBC. Well, he'd already done some interviews where he'd started uh, hinting towards that, hadn't he? Yep. And they reckon... Uh... Hey, you don't, whatever you do, don't get Aid Edmondson on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he will shout from the rooftops about how badly treated they both were because they started to talk out. Yeah. But anyway, we'll not get into that because we'll get in trouble. 
Yeah. Well, I'm always Jim. in trouble. Just the depth that there is. Yeah. Jim says Motorhead made an appearance on the young ones. They certainly did. Yep. Uh, so did Nine Below Zero. So did Madness. Uh, and uh, what's he called? The one that did baggy trousers. Madness. That's the one. The one I've just <laughs> said. Yeah. I couldn't remember the name of him. I just, like I said, brain's not working. <laughs> I just remember he did that Salvage Squad program, which I used to love. They. Madness is a group. Yeah. Suggs was the lead singer. He's the one who did the Salvage Squad. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Um, I'm sure the rest of the group would get mightily offended. <laughs> I'm sure they wouldn't care about little old me. Um, yeah, because they did. Um, they were still a chief to Navri, didn't they? Uh, Sent Avery, and he's actually the one that worked with John out in Iraq, John Mayfield. All right, cool. So he drove the bridge layer, and the counterpart Avery to go with him was the one they restored. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Gary T says he died 10 years ago. Tragic loss, such a talent. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Jim says, sorry, Mike, I didn't know of your health issues. I wish you well. Oh, cheers, buddy. Uh, Columbus Model says, evening, gents. Oh, evening. hello, young man. Evening to you. Good morning from us. Yep. Columbus Models, that's Callum. Uh, if you yeah. watch the 48 and 48, uh, mm -hmm. he was one of the Aussie guys who did the show, did the 48 and 48. How you doing, Callum? Hope you're well. See, I do remember you. I did follow his page yesterday after he commented on what's the, our Thursday live. I made sure to follow you, Callum. Oh, you poor sod, Callum. That's it, you fuck now. <laughs> yeah. Go back to what uh, Jim said about the health issues and stuff. That's why it takes me so long. That's why I don't put many videos out because I just can't, I haven't got the bandwidth to be working on quickly. My brain just won't do it. Is that your brain bandwidth? Yeah. Not your bandwidth coming out of your house? No. <laughs> It can let it can literally take me four or five days just to do one voiceover because I'm because I stutter I'm stuttering so much and things like that whilst uh, watching the screen and trying to concentrate on what I'm saying as well. Right, so, you uh, can I give you a little bit of advice about that? Yeah. Um, what I do is I always all my videos are scripted. I sit there and I look at what I've recorded and I will do a certain section and then I write what's there. So I go back through the video and say, right, I've done this, this and this on this one and I've done this, this and this on this one. Okay, so we'll start with that one. So it's like, right, here we're going to do this, this, this and this to this pieces. Yeah. So let's crack on with that. So goes through that now i say right all this is done now i'm going to do this but yeah. i always script it and the only thing i look at is my script and i only use that for guides yeah as a guide yeah it's not as though we're commentating on something that we're watching yeah all we're doing is saying i'm doing this and then i'm going to be doing that yeah and there you go. So just write it down first, what you're going to say. Yeah. That's all I do. And it's surprising because I was petrified. It scared the shit out of me doing it to begin with. Yeah. But Lee's just said to me, just write it down first. Don't try and force it. Yeah. yeah. Read it a couple of times and then go for it. Mm -hmm. but so that's all I do. And it makes life 
so much easier, mate. So much easier. Give it a try. See what happens. Well, that's what I tend to do with my history videos is I script it. Yeah. But then do it for your modeling videos. Yeah. Why did you change? Uh, just, I don't know. Because it's different. Because, yeah. When it, because I'm trying to, I can't, uh, I don't know why I changed it really. I think it's because I'm trying to comment over what I'm doing actually on the screen. Don't. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, that is probably one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. Just say, right, on this one, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing this. And then let the video run. You use the music bed, don't you? Hmm. Yeah, don't. I that I hate that when somebody says this is what I'm going to be doing, and then yeah. leaves it dead quiet, and you're like, oh, yeah. and or what I've seen somebody do when he talks, there's a music bed. When he stops talking, there's nothing. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, mate, what are you doing? <laughs> oh dear Lord, it's all good fun though. Yeah. Well, this thing, I mean, I've, I think I've pretty much got the history videos bit down now because I'm yeah. doing all right with them. Um, and I've had really good uh, uh, feedback on them. Uh, it's just the actual build videos that I struggle with because I can do the kit reviews as well because they've done really well on my channel. Um, so, yeah, it's just the actual build videos that I struggle with. Yeah. Because I'm not never sure if how much to cut the clips down and things like that. Yeah. I, think it's, I uh, was very, very much the same as you. I was like, okay, how much am I going to cut these down? Yada, yada, yada. And then I realized, well, actually, I want to show people all my errors and all my mistakes and everything I do. Mm -hmm. I've got no need to. So all I do is just crank it up. Say, so, there you go, folks. This is what I do. Yeah. Uh, we've got a few comments. Cool. Uh, Callum says, doing well. Cheers, mate. And oh, dear, you sure you want to do that? Of course I do. I want to watch your content. It's cool. Uh, he says, Mikey, don't worry about having a stutter. I have one when I'm recording the podcast. I used to be shy about it. And now I lean into my flubs and make fun of it. I'm also starting to do that with my videos. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. But I think this is the thing. I'm still getting used to YouTube because I've only been doing it for six months. So it's uh, getting used to doing that. And I think the hardest part that I found was listening to my own voice. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things that put me off doing YouTube for ages because I've always thought I had quite a monotonal voice. You do, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> what I've sort of learned over the last six months of doing videos and things is... I've learned how to animate my voice a bit more. Yeah. It's a reflection and yeah. emphasis. Uh, and talk yeah. like you're enjoying it. Yeah. That's the big thing. If you don't, if you sit there and talk and, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm really, really bored with this, people are going to turn off. People are not going to look at my channel. Look at people on mine. Yeah. As soon as they hear my voice, it's like, oh, God, it's him. <laughs> but, no, seriously, keep your voice up. Keep it yeah. happy. Show the enjoyment you get from it. Um, <clears throat> don't say I. Don't say me. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. This is what I'm going to do. We. Let's do this. Shall we yeah. do this? We're going to do this. But when you cock up, I cocked up. I fucked. I did it. I went wrong. I then it's you. Yeah. Because what you're doing is <clears throat> you're including everybody with the good things. Yeah. Then with the cock up, you're then excluding everybody, and you're the one who was in control of it. Because yeah. people, if you did that and said, "Well, we've cocked up," people are sitting and go, "No, we haven't. You have." Yeah. Yeah. 
it's like a couple of months ago, I had some bloke jump on my channel. You've got to stop making this music. Do -do -do -do. I don't like, it reminds me of my father. I hated my father. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he had a right chunter at me. He said, I'm disabled. And, da -da -da. and I went, this is my channel. I do what I want. I'm a disabled veteran. Boom, nothing. <laughs> I've been quite lucky so far. I've not had any negativity. Oh, you'll get it. Yeah. And it's quite funny because I just, I don't count out to them. Oh, you yeah. need to do it. <laughs> You're the one. A bloke jumped on. And he says, geez, dude, you really want to tell your, turn your volume down. And he was watching one of my first videos. Yeah. So I went back on and go, geez, dude, you want to listen to my other videos where I turn the volume down. <laughs> he came back with, geez, dude, I'm really sorry. I should have watched him first. <laughs> and he put a load of laughing faces on, which I replied laughing faces. Yeah. And if you reply to people the same way they spoke to you and put a smiley face there, they realize you're, you're being serious, but in a lighthearted way. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Tom says, it's how I sound in real life. No point in changing that for the video. Very true. Very true. Uh, Jim says, good morning, Gary. And Gary says, question. I've just made a blunder last night. I glued part of my part of my model. And just looking at it now, I haven't primed it. And it stands out like a sore thumb. Have you ever done something that stupid? <laughs> <laughs> On more than many occasions. Many, many my occasions. My dad used to call me and my mate the Durr brothers. So what does that tell you? <laughs> yeah. I think you may have to explain that to a few people. <laughs> well, when we were kids, we, used to, we were always doing stuff like um, making dens and making basketball hoops and things like that and building stuff. And we, uh, we'd always manage to achieve it, but the way we would achieve it would be so, would either be dangerous or. Um, It'd be so bizarre that it shouldn't work. It just happened to work. <laughs> <laughs> so he used to call us the Durr brothers. <laughs> okay, so you're still going to have to explain that. Who are the Durr brothers? Um, me and one of my, my friends, because he, when we were growing up, my right, dad and yeah. his mum were dating. Right, let me explain. Um, Burr Brothers, who are they? Where did that burr come from? What does that mean? Durr as in thick. Oh, Durr Brothers. Yeah. Right. It sounded like you were saying Burr Brothers. No. B U R R. No. Right. Okay. So, Durr. Yeah. As in that. Right. <laughs> Sorry, mate. All right. Because <laughs> I'm sat there thinking, who the hell are the Burr Brothers? Are they like the dangerous twins? Or the uh, what, what were they bloody before they did the young ones? Hmm. Aid Edmondson and um, oh, good lord, his name's gone completely now. Rick Mail, the Rick Mail, yeah, they yeah. did uh, a show and they were the Dangerous Brothers, that was it. <laughs> and they do really dangerous, stupid things, and it was highly hilarious. Yeah, that's pretty much what me and my mate were like when we were growing up. Cool. <laughs> right then, so they say use PVA or super glue. And I can't be bothered to wait for PVA to dry, so it's going to be a little double super glue. <laughs> Luckily, I've got long setting. <laughs> As they say in one of my favorite podcasts, don't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> no. Extra so point got, for any of yep, Go on. 60 seconds glue. Right, we got any more comments? Oh, yes. Okay. Let's, uh... Uh, Jim, I tend to drift mentally when I try to talk whilst working on a model. Kind of like what happens using hands free phone calling whilst driving. Yeah. Yep. I've never understood why youngsters feel the need to uh, be on their phones, especially with smartphones. Because when oh, we were younger, 
if you were texting, you could at least feel the buttons and you knew how many times you need to press each button and things. Mm. Now you've got none of that sort of uh, feedback through your touch. No, you don't. So you have to look at the screen. Yeah. It's stupid. Uh, Jim says, Gary T, I, welcome to the club. Huh. Gary T says, I wouldn't waste your time editing, Mikey. We don't care if you stutter or not. We like you regardless and are going to watch. Oh, thank you, mate. I Aww. appreciate it. Oh, you big softy, aren't you? <laughs> uh, Gary T says, thanks, Jim. Jim says, you're welcome, Bones. I mean, good advice, Steph. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Jim also says, Steph, do you remember a show called The Goodies? Goodies, goody, goody, yum, yum. Do, 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 do. No, I don't. <laughs> yes, Call my I do. <laughs> Tiff says, I can type on my smartphone without looking and it makes sense. Yeah. Still shouldn't be doing it whilst driving, though. Very dangerous. Oh, I don't. I, I don't I'm, like... I'm... Sorry, go. I was going to say, it proper grips my shit when... I see people on the phone whilst driving. Yep. What were you going to say, Steph? I'm uh, I'm quite naughty, I am. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I drive past somebody I see on their mobile phone, yeah. I toot my horn. <laughs> the amount of people I've seen throw their phones in the air. <laughs> well, the amount of times I've driven around, driven, been driving home from shopping or whatever, and I've thought to myself, I so wish I was an unmarked police car. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gary says, do, do, do the funky gibbon. Oh, yes. And Sif says, I'm good because I don't drive. Sonic drives for me. Nice. Lady of Legacy. Yep. <laughs> A lady who lunches. Yes. I am liking the tight fit on this tail fin. And there we go. There's the first one on. Excellent. It's a shame you'll never see it again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you, you're not wrong. Because the thing is, a lot of money to not see it. <laughs> yeah, they've got all the wooden panels. Yeah. On the inside as well. So I'll be doing well, that. Hopefully. I was looking at this before, right? Where is it? Once you've got the cowling on top, that's literally, and then you think you're going to have the machine guns there as well. Yep. So you're barely going to even see inside the cockpit, let alone the I engine. <laughs> but I will uh, make sure that uh, you can remove the cowling. So yeah, that's why yeah. that's why the pilot's not going in there. Yeah. So looking at the plans of it. No, can't see from that one. Do you know what you could do, stuff? What you can see on the cowling here. Mm. There's marks. So you can take those panels off. So I could cut across there, put that on the front of the aircraft, and one, two, three, four panels I can actually have off. Yeah. So I will probably do that and make little holes for where the screws go and everything like that. So those will probably be on the floor and a step ladder up to it. And oh god, I'm making a fucking rod for my own back again, aren't I? Well, Sorry. Well, was one thing you could do is put the pilot sat on the wing next to the fuselage, so it's like he's posing for a photo. Uh, yeah, it'd mean bastardizing the pilot, and yeah, yeah. I don't really want to do that. Hello, 
generator forward, so beat down. Draw column forward, so the elevator will be down, I should say. More comments. Jim says, hang up and drive. Absolutely, totally agree. I would arrest everyone who bloody jumped on their phone whilst driving if I had my way. Mm. Oh, yeah. My, um, my wife's niece, she does it, and she clips the curb and everything, and yet she still plays with her phone. on the con She has it on the centre console, and she's there constantly playing it, but she hasn't got enough experience to not stare at the phone. So she when she's apparently when she's operating the controls like the radio and stuff like that, she has to look at them because she hasn't got the muscle memory and things like that yet. Dear Lord. Yeah. So uh, as she's, you know, playing with her phone, she's leaning over to stare at her phone and things, completely ignoring the road. Sorry, but that is just stupid. Yeah. That's pure and utter stupidity. Yeah. I've I've said to my wife, said, if it was up to me, I'd just bloody arrest her, take a license off her. Yep. The thing is, if they get caught within the first six months, automatic yep. six-month ban. Yeah. And even up for the first two years, they can only get six points. And a license is uh, using a phone whilst driving now is six points, isn't it? Yep. So first two years, automatic ban for using your phone now. Uh, Tiffany says, who are you calling a lady? <laughs> uh, Jim says, got to say some nice detail on this road and kit. I am impressed. Yeah, it's not too bad. Hmm. Some people hate them because they are what they call short run kits. Hmm. And with them being short run kits, they very rarely have locating pins, and that's what pisses a lot of people off. Come on, keep hold of the bloody thing, you great. All right, princess, down, down. <laughs> so you're going to beat the dog as a win then. <laughs> Uh, Duke says, good day from Oz. How are you, chaps? Hello, Duke. Hello, mate. I hope you're well. Columbus Mall says, I lost my first car to a phone-distracted driver. There we go. It only takes a fraction of a second. In fact, to prove that, I had a crash last year because somebody went into the back of my car. And... Is because they were looking at paperwork on their driving on their passenger seat whilst they were driving, Jeez. and I've asked, I've got the webcam uh, dash cam footage, and it shows that they hit us twice in under a, in under two seconds. How? Because they they went into the backwards at forty mile an hour, but because I had the bigger car, yeah, my car barely moved, and they bounced off, and went back into it again. Christ. That that's literally how, and they had. I think I worked out from the footage, they had about forty-seven seconds worth of warning that there was an obstacle ahead. Oh. So yeah, unfortunately, their car was. Uh, I had a big Vauxhall insignia with a steel girder in the bumper, mm. and they had the little tiny. Um, oh. What's it called? One of those little, I think it's a little Citroen thing. Um, or Peugeot or something like that. But it's one of these little tiny cars. Right. And my car, it just had the crumpled bonnet, uh, crumpled plastic on the bumper and a smashed yeah. number plate. Theirs, their bonnet was bent upwards and all sorts. <laughs> Their car was a write-off. I bet it bloody was. And apparently, she'd only had the engine replaced in it uh, two a month before. Why? Because the en her engine had packed up, so she had to get a new engine put in it. 
Oh, jeez. And then she wrote the cow for not paying attention. No uh, sympathy. Yep. Well, Carl went back in again today. Again? No, sorry. It was in from uh, Wednesday. Went in Wednesday. Okay. Um, it judders when you accelerate at certain speeds. Clutch. Uh, either clutch or gearbox. Yeah, it's usually the clutch plate when that happens. Yeah. Um, so it's it's gone back in, and they are going to have a look at it. Uh, I got it back today. It's going back in on the 20, 20th of May, because yeah. that's when the, the guy who's going to look at it can look at it. Yeah. Yeah, we had to, when I was in the Falklands, we forever have to replace the RAF vehicles because they were always destroying the clutch plates on them. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> well, you know why that is, don't you? Yeah, they don't know how to bloody drive. You no. Know? <laughs> we know how to drive perfectly well. Uh, it's because we're always bondu bashing. <laughs> That's what we do. Mm. And we're very bloody good at it. Well, the problem was, it was always the same vehicles as well. It was um, the ones for clearing the snow off the runways. Yeah. And we kept telling them, once you come off the snow, take it out of low range. No. Because it's not designed to run on a road in low range. No. What? We're not. We're not doing it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So every couple of days, they would come back in and we'd have a massive truck clutch plate in pieces no bigger than that. <laughs> yeah, it's about right. So we'd have to, we'd be working till 10 o'clock at night trying to find all the little, little bits of clutch plates in the bell housing. <laughs> uh, Duke says he's doing great guns. Excellent. And Jim says, even more bizarre, I've seen someone on a cell phone whilst driving. Uh, cycling, sorry. Oh, yeah. Using both hands as well. <laughs> Makes you want to put a stick through the spokes to wind them up. <laughs> well, it makes me want to put a stick through the spokes anyway. Like do on the Big Daddy. The big Daddy with Adam Sandler. Oh, don't know. Okay. Well, that's wrong. Right. Here. Shall I click on big screen? Please, Ken. There you go. Here, they tell you to put part 53. Yes. That. There's part 53. Part 53 goes that side. The bit that goes <laughs> there, part 51, which is the one I've just taken off. Oh. Going well so far, then. What, what? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, speaking of um, using phone while cycling, it's a good job skateboards aren't a thing much anymore, isn't it? Uh, Can you imagine skateboarding whilst on your phone? No. I've seen people using those um, hoverboards whilst on the phone. Really? I 
Captain Connor. James says, start painting the road wheels on my tiger last night. So many. I had to stop because my eyes were getting sore. <laughs> yes, those ever-resourceful Germans. Yep. Oh, time for a cup of tea. Hmm. I should be back in a moment. Do you want me to send you on, Mikey? I go off. <laughs> so, we know what Jim's working on. What's everyone else working on at the minute? Are you working on a model whilst watching? Ooh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Mm, not quite. Alan's working on the Meng Marque Whippet. Ooh, there's a live about that. I saw it yesterday. Who does that one? <laughs> it's a lovely kit to build, isn't it? Garrity says, working on my sabre still. Still gluing bits on the wings at the minute. Uh, see, when you said sabre, I thought you meant like the sword. Making a model sword or something. I thought sabre's an aircraft. I'm looking forward to seeing when you get onto vehicles and tanks and things as well. That should be interesting. What I'm having is, if we look, if I can focus and get that knife away from my hands before I slice my fingers open, I focus on this. Oh, course. Right. So we've got these little tabs here at the back. And on here. And they're supposed to line up with the slots on this. But they don't quite marry up. On They marry up on one side, but not the other. So I'm thinking that these two elevators are slightly too far apart. So what I'm trying to do is squeeze them as hard as I can to try and get them to line up. Cliff says she's working on her Ogryn army. Ooh. Sounds interesting. Duke says... Just got a box of Zombicide Monty Python figures. Monty Python figures, cool. Oh, ogres, like Shrek. Excellent. I like ogres, they're cool. Don't forget to put it up in the Discord. Who was it that was asking last week about Discord, anyway? Was it Skelly? I don't know if he's still in here. If he is, shout up, speak up. Could it be nice to get some more modelers in, in my Discord channel? Get some more engagement there. Gary engages quite a lot on there, and so does Tiff.
way too thick. What we might have to do is just put a little bit off on one side just to widen the slot. Yeah, kind of work. <laughs> that slang for you talk too much. Shut up. No, not at all. I'm glad you're engaged, mate. I like seeing your work, and I like asking. Uh, I like the fact that you ask questions and things. And I just hope we're welcoming and able to help you with answers which is another reason why it's a good idea i'd like to have more scale modelers in there because we can help each other then and after all that is what this is all about ow see that's why you keep knives well away from your hands yeah this what that's what it's all about is engaging with the groups and helping one another let's point one another and not being a knob about things my discord server is called um in fact gary can you have a look at what the name of my discord server is mate pretty sure it's bearded veteran creates just whilst I'm trying to glue this on. Yeah. Oh, I can have a look now, whichever. Server. Yeah, it's called Bearded Veteran Creates. And the logo. Uh, focus. I'm back. Welcome back. Yeah. Ooh. Focus. Have I showed you what I've been making? Have you shown me what I've been making? No, you haven't. But please do. All right. So you will hog. I go away and you hog the screen. Well, there's nothing happening on yours. <laughs> oh, yes. You did say last week. Sending foam. Nice big sheets. Dirt sheet. Yeah. Uh, I've got to sort the video out this afternoon. Well, I've been yeah. saying that for the past four days. <laughs> Yes, again, Mr. Mod Modler is procrastinating. <laughs> In fact, what do I do? I think it's part of being a modeler. Yeah. Columbus, are you on? Uh, have you got a Facebook page? Yeah, it, it's Callum. Mikey? Yeah. It's Callum. Yeah, I know. Columbus Models is Callum. Yeah. Yeah, bearded. Yeah. You know, a lot of people do call me beardy. 
on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, on, on my other YouTube, most people know me as Beardy. Cool. <laughs> I made a bit of a boo yesterday because I was looking for Columbus models on YouTube, but right. I, I got muddled up with my words when I typed them in. I put Columbia models. <laughs> It came up with oh, a very right. different type of video. I bet it did. <laughs> and I bet Kaylee wasn't very happy. Kaylee doesn't know unless she's watching. <laughs> Which she has been known to do. <laughs> yes. Find it. Columbus models. Okay, so I'm putting Columbus models into Facebook. What's it coming up with? It's coming up with modeling agencies. Right, let's have a look for pages. Those people group pages. Hmm. <laughs> Columbus Hall said, I mean, that's still a win win situation. Well, yeah, it is. But... <laughs> Columbus not, not particularly helpful, though, when I'm looking for your page. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, this is what I love about <clears throat> the guys on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, everybody helps everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. and, unless there are certain ones that are unhelpful, should we say. Yeah. You're, you're always going to get that. Um, but, yeah, it's like everybody helps everybody else, and it's, like, really nice. I love it. And I, yeah. the fact that everybody helps each other and it's more of a community and you, then you're bitching against each other. You're going to get that. People are going to do that. But, hey. Okay. So my phone's struggling is fine because every time I type in Columbus models, it comes up with modeling agencies and things like that. So... If you can go on either Discord or Facebook or Instagram or whatever, Callum, and look for Bearded Veteran Creates and just drop me a line, I'll send you the link to the Discord. It's the easiest way to do it. If, that, if you don't mind. Hey, John's in. Says, ah, gentlemen. Who are you calling gentlemen? God, blimey. Can't take him nowhere. There you go. Columbus Malls has found me on FB. Excellent. I knew there's a reason why I kept that page going. <laughs> Mm. Coffee's nearly cold. Hint, hint. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to be working today. My hint machine. Hmm. <laughs> John says, Mikey, you said you searched for Columbia models instead of Columbus models. Very different results. Exactly. Yep. I've also just tried searching Columbus models as well, and that's come up with the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I've just tried that as well. It just yeah. comes up with modeling agencies, doesn't it? Yeah. 
what we need is an at whatever mm. the, uh, yes the handle yes no anyway, evening john hope you're well or mr marley depends if mr mayfield's watching because if mr mayfield's watching he'll go what <laughs> and callum said you'll probably find better models there <laughs> Uh, no comment. Married men don't comment on such things. No. Otherwise, they get castrated. <laughs> I've had nearly nine years of marriage to learn that. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, September will be nine years. Oof. How long were you with Kaylee before? Two years. Right, so that'll be eleven years together. Yeah. I'm just gonna do that. Yeah, eleven years together. So Morgan was only one when we got together. My stepson. Yeah. And Ethan was five. So, yeah. I think my, my daughter would have been seven. Ooh, we're up to 12. Welcome, people. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the love to both of our channels. Oh, yes, please. It's much appreciated. Help Steph get to his one and a half thousand mark and help me get to a hundred. Which I'm not far off, actually. It's 193. Yep. Let's get him up to a hundred. Yeah. And no, you can't unsubscribe, then resubscribe. <laughs> Mate, they're lucky I haven't subscribed to myself multiple times. Just create loads of different accounts. I'm sure that's how some people do it, looking at the content. Um, what they do is they pay money. Do you know what? I got, a me I, got I actually got a, a message off someone offering to do that. To do yep. like a, a thousand subscriptions for uh, like $10 or something. Stay there, you stupid thing. If not, I'm going to have to super glue you. Uh, Jim says, question, what is a model or modeling project that has been a real nightmare and still not done? Um, who's, uh, yeah. Yep, I've got I one of those. Like that, to be honest. I mean, the Land Rover fire truck's been a bit of a pain in the backside because trying to get the uh, the roof and that to actually fit on because the the, uh, the seats are slightly too wide and the angle of the windows is slightly too far inwards. And then whenever you put pressure on it, the bloody axle, so the, the um, wheel hubs snap. That's been a bit of a pain, but other than that, I've not had any problems, really. There's yeah, always a I, have, I have one of those. Go and watch your stuff. Uh, the King Tiger. Ah. With full interior and bow panzer that di I'm going to make a diorama out of. Uh, every time I touch the King Tiger, something else falls off. And it, it's, it's just so infuriating and frustrating. So yeah, that's that's my um, shelf queen at the moment. What are you doing, Mikey? 
What am I doing? Oh, okay. You are you are there still. It's all right. It just looks like you're frozen. No, the uh, it did freeze a little bit. Um, Gary says nine years. This year it was forty-one for us. We met in an arcade in nineteen eighty-three. Wow. Five years before I was born. That's cool. 1983, I was six, 50, or well, depends when, in 1983. I am but a young pup. Not that me. you are. Back on saying to think of it, in 1983, my dad was only seven, uh, 18 years old. Yeah, my dad would have been 18, so he'd have still been doing his friendship. Callum says, Mikey, are you younger than 29? No. Yeah, I'm 36. I turned 36 two weeks ago. In fact, I was that dedicated to the show that I did a show on my birthday. Yes, you did. That's dedication for you. Uh-huh. Dedication. <laughs> dedication. That's what you need. Oh, I'm not having this. Right, hang on. What? What's up? What's up? Right. I'm going to skip one comment for a moment. I'll be with you in a minute, Jim. Tiff says, you're old. I'm only 29. I'm not old. Callum says, old man. Hey, steady on. <laughs> Oi, wind the bobbins in, Callum. If I'm old, what does that make Steph? <laughs> Ancient. <laughs> Callum says, woo, Tiff and I are in the 29 club. <laughs> Jim says, for me, it's a recent model, the Border Krupp 88mm flat gun. So many fit and instructional issues that it has sucked the enthusiasm out of me. Oh, mate, they're horrible, they are. Those sort of kits, I don't really have a problem with them because what I do is I just pretend they've been destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I make it look like it's been destroyed. Which is nothing. Uh, Gary T says, if he's old, then I'm ancient. <laughs> Calm says, it makes Steph wise. Uh, <laughs> it makes what? Steph wise. No, he's just creeping. Jim says, I'm young and vibrant, 59. Absolutely. They say life begins at 40, so I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that's true. Well, apparently 50 is the new 40. Yeah. 29, wow. I'd already been married two years when I was 29. Been married two years, had three stepkids, a daughter. How? By 29, I'd done my nine years in the Air Force, mm -hmm. and I'd just started university yeah. as a mature student. Yeah. Uh, the oldest one on, on my course, and I was teaching the kids how to drink. <laughs> as you do. Yeah. Well, because I was a, a reservist, I did seven years in reserves. 
um, when I came back from Iraq, my dad said to me, oh, you need to either get a job or go out on another tour. So I volunteered for another tour. But they said, oh, it's, it's going to be a while yet before another one comes up. I was like, yeah, all right, fine. I'll go to college. Um, four months later, I got told, uh, just to let you know, in a couple of weeks, you're going to the Falkland Islands. I was like, great. So I told my college tutors and they went, well, if you want, you can sit your exams and see how you get on. I went, yeah, all right. So I ended up, within four months, I'd done two. I started off level one city and girls course. And I ended up doing, coming away with two entry level three city and girls. Oh, nice. <laughs> in four months. <laughs> That's the thing, though. It just goes to show what you can do putting your mind to it. Well, this is the, this is what I was saying before. All I've really got going for me is my brain because I'm, you know, I'm not a stupid person. Um, and that's why it scares me, the idea that I'm losing that. I get that, mate. I get that completely. Jim says, surprised how many younger women are attracted to fit, bald man with a goatee. <laughs> well, I've got rather thick head of hair, but I do have a large beard. <laughs> and a large belly. Yes. Sorry, true. did I, sorry, I, I really need to sort my filters out. I, they're just not working. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't think sorry. of it. Last week you called me a fat bastard as well. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Bugger, it's on YouTube. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do get quite a lot of compliments on my beard, and not just from, from women either. Um, I remember standing outside the hos hospital months ago, and this guy was sat in a wheelchair, and he had a bit of a beard. And he looked at me like, can I just say something, man? I was like, yeah, he said, your beard is fantastic. I, said, I wish I could grow mine that long. I was like, what? I said, what do you do? I said, well, nothing really. It just sort of happens. <laughs> I just don't shave it. Uh, Tiff says, not married and no kids. Saves money. Ah, uh, dinky. <laughs> yeah. you, know says, dinky is, you know what a dinky is, don't you? Go on. Dual income, no kids. Ah. Jim says, love the beard, Mikey. Gives you character. Why, thank you. It has become part of my personality now. Even my wife says that I'm not me when I don't have a beard. Because I'm not the man she married. <laughs> I would love to see you without your beard before the end of this. It's not going to happen, but I do have a photo of me without a beard. The last time it was the last time I was clean shaven, which was at the beginning of the uh, pandemic, when I was still in the ambulance service, and we had to shave our beards. We had to be clean shaven for the respirators. Right. And I look about fifteen. I look like a fat 15 year old with like a double chin and things. <laughs> uh, Gary T says, I've had a beard for years and I hate it, but the wife loves it, so it stays. Good man. It just means you don't have to shave, mate. That's, that's the one <laughs> thing I like about having what I've got. Uh, but I can have it nice and short. Hmm. Um, I've been told I'm not allowed to have a beard, a big, yeah. full, bushy beard. And the words are, you look like Captain Bloody Haddock <laughs> from Tintin. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, she's not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Mine started off as... With... Once I left the reserves, I was just like, I don't have to shave anymore. And then I, I just liked the look of having a short beard. And then I had a short beard when we got married. And then I didn't cut it for like 12 months at one stage. And I was, I thought it was really, really cool. And I really liked the look of it. So I just kept growing it. So now I just trim it now and again. Yeah. When it gets too untidy. 
I don't uh, know if I've told you, but I probably have. Well, um, before my before I got broke it, mm. I did uh, extra stuff, mm -hmm. and I was in uh, Fury. Oh yeah. And for that, we had to grow a beard. Yeah. We weren't allowed to shave for eight weeks before. So I'm like, cool, can do that. And yeah, I looked like Captain Herbert. <laughs> Ridiculous. And Lisa's like, nope, you can lose that bugger. As soon <laughs> as it's finished, you're getting rid of it. Okay. But it's really quite funny because first day on set, I'm stood there, and the director, David Ayres, is wandering around looking at everybody, stops, and he just stares at me, and he says, how long have you been growing that? Obviously, in an American accent. Yeah. And I went, about eight weeks, why? How do you feel about losing it? I said, I couldn't be more bloody happy. The wife will love you if you make me lose it. Yeah. And he laughed and called over the, the makeup parties and says, right. Shorten it all the way down, and they went, look, and went, How long? and they went, Oh, grade one. And I've got these four women fussing around me, trimming me down with clippers and everything. It was hilarious, <laughs> but yeah, it was an absolute scream on that. Absolute scream. I had a great time. Uh, Tish says, you ain't fat, you're cuddly. No one really likes washboard abs. They hurt when cuddling. I wouldn't know. <laughs> what was that? Uh, no no woman really likes washboard abs. They hurt when you cuddle. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I'm glad she said cuddling. <laughs> uh, but, then, but they're not very nice, banging up and down on your chest. <laughs> Callum says, my mum threatened divorce when my dad shaved once. <laughs> when I was clean shaven, the first time my wife saw me clean shaven, she actually refused to speak to me for like two days. Because, I bet you loved the peace and quiet. Well, because of, her, because of her amount of health problems, she was struggling to associate what she was seeing with what she knew of me. All right, is this Kaylee? Yeah. Right. I've only been married the once. <laughs> Yeah. Just checking. yeah, but um, she her, her mind couldn't put the two things together. Yeah. So it freaked her out for a couple of days until it started growing yeah. back again. I bet. Right. Quickly. Here we go. Uh, Do you want to put this on full screen? Come on. Focus. <laughs> Focus. Are you, you focusing on my hand, you twatting thing? Oh, good. There we go. There we so, go. All the seat belts, Ooh. all the wood on the floor, and the side bits, and the little chain dangling down. Nice. And the seat as well, the cushion on the seat. So there's that's done. That's ready to go into the aircraft. Uh -huh. That's done as well. So just that bit there. I had to not sand that back, respray it, and then glue it. Jobs yeah. are good. So just got to put Excellent. a bit of wash on there. And that can now, go in as well. How much did that set cost you? Uh, 33 euros, just under 30 quid. Yeah. That included postage and packaging. Yeah. But if you have a look on here, you can see just on that. Uh, oh wow! Those have got levers on them, the four at the bottom. But the yeah. top one, I can't get it to. Oh, there you go. It just there you go. It's glazed. Yeah. All the gauges are pre-glazed. Nice. So you don't have to fanning around with putting glazing on them. He says throwing it all over the shop so basically what you're doing is just building the model and then putting stuff sticking stuff to it yes cool 
an in a, innovative approach. Mm. I'm really happy with how this is looking. Really happy. Good. Jim says his late father wore a full beard for over 30 years and he didn't recognize it when he shaved it off. <laughs> you know, I was the same with my dad because growing up, my dad always had a big mustache and a bald head. And then I think it was when I was about 14, 15, he turned up to pick us up one weekend and he had no mustache. And it looked, it was really, really weird. Uh, Tiff says, not having kids isn't a choice. And I've just started a new relationship. I don't think he wants to get married again. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah. Uh, Callum says he hasn't been clean shaven in 14 years. Don't blame you. Uh, Jim says, fit, bold, goatee with glasses. Ladies see me as their sexy professor. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Uh, Jim says, very nice stuff. Thank you, mate. And he says, outstanding detail. It really adds a lot. It does. Yeah, it does. adds a whole lot more. Have you seen Dune? No, I don't watch that sort of film. Right, okay. To be honest, I don't watch television anymore. Or film. I don't watch many yeah. films. The only right. times I watch films now is when I'm, you know, if it's going out of my way to spend time with Kay or Morgan. Yeah. And we sit and have a movie night or something. Other than that, I don't watch them anymore. But just have a quick sketch at Doom. Not yeah. watch it. Just look for the ornithopter. Yes. Oh, my God. Love it. I've got How does that come along? Have you painted it? Oh, that's finished. I've just got to make the base. Nice. Yeah. Show us, show us, show us. Here's a sec. I just nearly knocked my light for six. Yeah. I would show you it if I can remember where I put it. <laughs> you are looking a little bit bewildered there, Steph. <laughs> right, flip back to your normal screen and I'll try and find it. Okay. I have to put it somewhere safe. Yeah. And it's I have those sort of places as well. Yeah. Well, this is an absolute hovel in here. An absolute hovel. I just really so need to clean it all up and tidy it all up. Ah, there it is. He's hiding over there with the F2B. Uh, where's the room? Come on. There you go. Ah, there we go. It's tiny. <laughs> but the 172nd second scale one is out as well, and that is a little yeah, bit bigger. It'll probably fit inside just inside my screen. Yeah. But yeah, I'm loving this. It's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I just need to make a base for that now. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it took me about 40 minutes to build. Yes. And about an hour to paint. Nice. And then about five minutes to weather. Yeah. There's a little bit more weathering I need to do on it. But not much. Yeah.
better. So a little bit of a seam there. What I might do, if you don't mind, is carry on with this and catch up with you. So I've got it all yeah. closed off and everything, if that's all right. It's fine, mate. It's your build. <laughs> We know how to put stickers on, so. Yep, I can do stickers. <laughs> I do stickers, me. Yeah. <laughs> That's thing. A lot of the a lot of the work you need to do to catch up is applying those decals. So, yeah. Once we've you put one on, that's it, isn't it? Yep. But what I've got to do is mark all the stuff on the airframe that needs to come off. Yes. Uh, Jim says, what paint scheme and markings for your albatross, gentlemen? I shall show you all now. Mr. Jim. That one I'm doing. Which is the one for uh, Luther Van Luther Van Richthofen. Lothar Van Richthofen. That's the one. His brother. Yes. His older brother was Manfred. A.K.A. Zibed Baron. Jim says, very nice, Mikey. Thank you. And mine is oh, shit. <laughs> My plane just went flying. <laughs> oh no. I'm doing the one on the box. Yes. You're doing the Christmas one. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Jim said the Red Baron's cousin was a Luftwaffe general during World War II. Interesting. All right, who was that? And he says, very nice, Steph. Those Germans really know how to paint an aeroplane back then. Oh, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Oh, so, 24. Well, the reason the Germans did that is because they had a. Uh, especially 
the flying circuit was they had an order from German High Command saying that they had to camouflage all the planes so it's making it more difficult to spot in the air. And the pilots turned around and said, do you realise how difficult it is to spot any aircraft in the air? <laughs> we might as well just paint in bright colours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was Wolfram von Richthofen. Oh, Wolfram. Cool. Callum says, my dream kit is a 30-second scale D5A Albatross based on the scheme of a restored and flying one we have here in Auckland. Nice. Oh, cool. They do actually have that kit in Roden, from Roden as well. Do they? Yeah, they have a D5A kit. Well, that's right, they do, don't they? Yeah. It's just whether they can get it over to New Zealand. I'm sure rodent, uh, you can pick them up in uh, Kiwi land. Mm. The land of the little tiny birds. Yep. The land of the hobbits is. <laughs> Isn't that your nickname or something? The Hairy Hobbit or something? Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> I knew I'd seen it somewhere. <laughs> On Discord. That'll be the one. I do spend rather a lot of time on that. <laughs> Why not? Uh, Calm says, or oh, I can skip a few mortgage payments and get a wing nut wings one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one. If you can find somebody who's willing to sell it. Yeah. Tiff says, Hobbits is New Zealand. They are indeed. Yep. That's where Columbus is from. Yes. Auckland, New Zealand. Never been to that part of the world. No, neither have I. And the missus wants to go. I want to go because we want to go and have a look at uh, Hobbiton. <laughs> that sounds like a quest, like uh, one we gave a, a kid, one of the cadets in our squadron when we were kids. We went to RF Lossiemouth for annual camp. Yeah. And we told him that. Um, if he looks really closely, went hunting enough, he'd find a wild haggis. And he actually believed us. Oh, you buggers. He genuinely spent two weeks looking for a wild haggis. Oh, man. That's all for it. <laughs> Hurt, but funny. So at the end of the two weeks, when we're doing the paper plate awards, his award was actually a tin of, a tin of haggis. <laughs> nice. We told him that it looked like a giant rabbit. <laughs> um, Callum says there's plenty of wing wing kits down here just no one can afford them <laughs> yes. and that's the problem yeah Thing is, it doesn't matter how good you make your kit, if you price yourself out of the market, that's it, you're gonna go bust, aren't you? Yep. 
that's one of the things that worries me about accurate armor because I actually do quite like accurate armor models, but there's no way I can afford to pay for them. No. The only reason I've got the Sense Avery with tra- with its trailer is because of M4H. There's no way I could afford the 108 or even justify the 180 quid for the kit. No, you can't. Um, it's like me. Um, I would. There's one just come out. Some bloke's done one, and it's a uh, Lambretta, mm-hmm. and it's something like about one eighteenth scale, mm-hmm. and it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, but I just couldn't afford it. Yeah. It's like uh, my um, my dream kit is the one thirty five Foden recovery truck. Right. Because that's what I spend most of my time working on and fixing the things. But the only place that does them, or the only company that does them, is Accurate Armor. And they want 220 quid for one of theirs. Yeah. It's like uh, the scooter, the Lambretta. Yeah. Um, It's. uh, um, They want 170 quid for it. It's a resin yeah. printed one, yeah. which fair enough, but 170 quid. I can't justify spending that much money on one. Yeah. Not for someone that's going to sit on a shelf. Yeah. And if I did buy one, the missus would be like, how much did that cost you? I can't lie to her. Yeah. 170 quid. What the? What? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> It'd be one of the shortest marriages in history. <laughs> uh, we've got some more comments. Jim says, question, did Wingnut Wings produce a Fokker D8? I believe so. Did they produce a what? A Fokker D8. Um, yeah, I think they <laughs> did. Yeah. Mr. Mayfield's in. His uh, ears pricked up when someone mentioned the Centurion Avery. Yeah, <laughs> we were actually talking about your bridge layer before, John, and the Saint the Saint Avery that was restored by Salvage Squad. Uh, Callum says figures are the same, up to fifty quid for a single figure. Yeah, and and then they complain when people go onto certain web, certain uh, Chinese websites, and get them for ten, fifteen quid. Yeah. This is the thing. If you if you price yourself out of the market and somebody's going to do it cheaper, then that's it. It doesn't matter how good your work is. People are going to go for the cheaper version. Uh, Jim says, Mikey, accurate armor kits, are they molded resin? Yes. Uh, they're actually cast resin. Um, I've actually got on my channel, I've got a video that I did of the looking at the Sense Avery accurate armor kit and prepping it for the building as well. And I've got to start doing the building videos at some point. But if you look, they are on there. So you can have a look at what they're like. Uh, Garrett, he says, I'd love a Wingnut Wins kit, but I'd never buy one because I know, considering the price, I could never do it justice. So I'll settle for the Edward kits instead. Edward are perfectly good. I yep. think. Yeah. Uh, Jim says, Gary T, I agree. Same for me, hunting down certain Dragon model kits has induced shock when seeing what the asking prices are. Blimey. Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Oh, yeah. The problem me is and- these people are... Um, what look, what's the word I'm looking for? Collectors. Um, yeah, the collectors. They're not builders. Yeah. It's like somebody asked me the other day, are you a collector or a builder? I'm a builder. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I may have a large stash, but I'm still a builder. I The kits I buy, I buy to build. Yes.
we just happen to have rather large stashes. <laughs> but we we get them all with the intention of building. Yep. Uh, Jim says, I've seen some accurate armor kits here in the States. Found them at a hobby shop selling off a collection from someone else. Yeah. Like I say, if you, if you have a look on my channel, there are uh, two videos that are done with the uh, accurate armor kit I've got. So you can see them close up. Then. They are actually really, really nicely molded. But they're a lot of work and they're bloody heavy. Accurate armor, not so accurate. Yeah. It's like the Tamir Mark, uh, Tamir Chieftain Mark V. Eesh. <laughs> it's Tamir, but not as we know it. A chieftain, but not as we know it. Ooh. Well, that's gone quick. 14. We've got 13 minutes left. Didn't realize we've been going for an hour and three quarters. Yeah. Doesn't time fly when you're having fun. Tell you what has been nice for doing this is just getting back to just focusing on doing the plastic, working with the plastic. Yeah. Not trying to come up with dioramas and stuff like that all the time. I'm sure we can change that at the end. Oh yeah, I mean I've got the base I'm gonna do for it. I already know what I'm doing. So hopefully. Should look nice. It's finished. Um, how do I feel about working with resin? It kind of puts me off due to the potential health risks. Um, I don't worry about it too much, to be honest. I suppose you should wear a mask and stuff really when you're doing it you should be wearing a mask when you're spraying yeah, yeah. I, I try to remember to wear a mask when I'm spraying sometimes I forget I'm not perfect yeah, yeah but I always try to remember to wear a mask yeah. I don't tend to but that's because my beard's so big that masks aren't really effective anyway then um, grab yourself one of the little paper ones. You know, the ones they used a lot during the uh, damn panic. I didn't use them then either. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've worn masks for years. Um, oh, bugger. Yeah. Thank God for my apron. <laughs> that just went flying. Oh, wow. That's pretty small. That's what she said. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if I need to wear anything, then PP wise, like a instead of a mask, I tie my bandana around my face or something because it just covers my beard as well. Well, then so it stops any bits getting into my beard. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I make sure I have the extractor on and things like that. Uh, also, even though smear extra thing doesn't work on resin. What it does do is it creates a liquid layer that doesn't evaporate so that a lot of the dust gets trapped within the liquid. So you can just wipe it off afterwards. Thing is that rather than using tamir extra thin, mm. use water. Yeah. Um I work with resin a lot as well. Yeah. Uh, I've got my 3D printer, so I print a lot of stuff. And yeah. I when I'm sanding, I always wear a mask. 
yeah. and I always, always wet sand because that reduces the amount of resin dust in the air and it yeah. traps it in the water. So yeah. uh, the thing is, though, bless them, using Tamir Extra Thin yeah. to trap the resin is a very expensive way of doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't advise doing that because it's just very expensive. It probably works, but water is yeah. a damn sight cheaper. Yeah. Possibly sugar water then, because that wouldn't evaporate very quickly either. Well, water doesn't evaporate very quickly. Uh, I'd love to find out who told you to use time you're extra thin. Uh, me. Um, you must be very rich, Mikey. No, I just don't give a shit. We're on out of an hour. Yeah, but then <laughs> why not just buy more? Buy... Uh, yeah. The components. Well, to be fair, I use super glue a lot anyway. So yeah. I, I don't use tomato extra thin that much. Um, and the white one, I don't think I've used in terms of model building for over oh, almost a year now. I've right. still got the same bottle that I, that models for heroes sent me. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter if I waste that a little bit. Yeah. Because it's just sitting there. Um, and even, I mean, a year and a half, and I'm only on. I've used about uh, a third of this bottle of tomato extra thin, and this is the second bottle. Okay. In, in nearly two years, so. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to use much of it. It's just. Not saying like slather it in it, just put some along the seam so because it, it cleans any grease off as well, yeah, and any um, like the releasing agent and stuff, a non abrasive cleaner. Have you seen my video about making your own timer extra thin? I haven't, but I am going to look at doing that rather than buying another ball, yeah. I so much cheaper. Yes. So much cheaper. And also, if you're into Rubicon. Yes. I've, I have actually got... Uh, I got a Rubicon kit the other day, and I've got another two on my shelf to do. Cool. Yeah. I can't remember who it was I was watching the other day. And they're going on about using... Um... Tamir Extra Thin on you saying, oh, the only thing I've found that glues Rubicon is Tamir Extra Thin. Mm. And I'm like, no, sorry, you're wrong. Oh, it's James off LPJ this morning. Mm. And I'm like, no, that's wrong, James. It's one of the few things that struggles with it. Yeah. Well, that's better. Uh, let's get through these because we've got five minutes left. Um, totally agree with respiratory protection. A must for me with modelling. Yeah. You really should. Um, I don't encourage anyone else to not do it. No. It's just my personal choice. I just can't be asked. And I don't like having anything over my face either. It causes me to have panic attacks. So. Uh, it's not yeah. what Kaylee tells me. Hell is a reason why. <laughs> yeah. No, she's not. It is an ex. Uh, one of my exes tried to smother me in my sleep. So now I, I, I don't like anything covering my face. Yeah. I had a psychotic ex. <laughs> because because she figured out that she, was, she wasn't going to be able to kill me using a knife or scissors. Because I was always able to overpower her. She decided to try and smother me in my sleep. Nice girl. Yeah. Well read. 
<laughs> so now anything over my over my mouth causes me to panic. Uh, Jim says printed resin seems cleaner to work with than cast resin. No need to remove the casting blocks. Yeah, but it, it's still just as bad, Jim, and you still get as much dust. dust. Yeah. He also says Rubicon uses ABS plastic and he has a liquid cement that works with ABS. There we go. Mm. But I bet you it, it, it's quite expensive. If you go and have a look on my website, on my YouTube channel, on there is how to make your own. And it works brilliantly with ABS. They'll even stick your hands together. <laughs> Right, I'm going to hold there. Yeah, it looks like I might have a little tiny bit of filling to do next time. Cool. Cool. That's looking all right. Nice. That's what you want. So, how far have you got, Steph? Well, I have got seat belts, floor, wood in there, done. Little chain down there, gauge there. Oh, well out of range. Sorry, folks. Yeah. So, got the gauge on there, seat belts, the floor, and the compass. Little chair. Oh, good lord. Come on, at least. Oh, good lord. It might be because oh, you've got your thumbnails creating lines around it. Oh, anyway, there, we, there go. we go. So, yeah. I got that done. That one done. Yeah. This one done. This just needs handles putting on those. Nice. For the bottom. That gauge done. Nice. And engine, yeah, that one there, and then you got that one just there. So there's the only two on the engine. Yeah, and I've got the wood paneling on there. So a lot of it is done. That's these ones here are for the internals. Yeah, internal wood panels, and then you've got all those to go on the outside. <laughs> are you looking for? Are you enjoying doing them? Oh God, yes. So I've got to remove, let me quickly show you, things like that panel there. Yeah. Those bits there. That bit there. That's mm -hmm. got to come off. There's a panel there that's got to come off. you got a fair bit of seam cleaning to do as well, haven't you? Oh, no. no, not really. Oh, no, it's the tabs. I thought it was because yeah, the no, no. it looked like seam. Yeah. Yeah, they're the tabs I put in. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... Oh, okay, that's fun. Yeah, that's slightly different. So, hmm. I might have to put these lines in, because the... Oh, wait, this is... Yeah, it's for the 132nd Albatross D3 OAW for roading kit. Yeah. That's saying it's got panel lines in there. And there's no... Oh, no, they're... They're not panel line. They just haven't done them. So yeah, what I'm going to have to yeah. do is spray the internal bits there, dark brown. Yeah. So I'll probably use my wood grain. Yeah. But I use yeah. everything from wood grain to leather. So, <laughs> yeah, that's where I am. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Marley says, looking good stuff. Thank you very much, John. And Jim says, try a blank piece of cardboard. Might help the camera focus better. Yes, it should do. Uh, with me, um, I've put the rear elevators on. Ooh. So let's get in there. I've also, if I focus, there you go. 
kind of there we go i've cleaned up the seam on there it's all nice and smooth i've done most of underneath there as well nice yeah it's getting there slowly it is it's looking really good so far mate thank you seamless in fact haha <laughs> There you go. Should we switch over to your mush? I thought I can. Where are we? And there we go. Hello, everybody. <laughs> right. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, we've still got 10. We've had a higher 12, which is awesome. We're getting more people. Excellent. That's what we like. Yeah. Yeah. We hope you've watching. enjoyed being spending the morning with us yep so, yeah so it's goodbye from me that's goodbye from him. goodbye from him are you gonna actually let me say goodbye <laughs> no it's my show <laughs> yeah, but what, what he's forgotten is i've got the control as well <laughs> stay safe guys keep modeling see you next week bye Dotty bye everyone so go on and do not stop Till his tail's down near your prop If he only crashes this side in